Welcome again, ladies and gentlemen, to the philosophy of art and science. As always, if you support these programs, you can head over to, oh my God, <laughs> it says game aborted. Did you leave it? Uh, you can head over no, no. to patreon.com slash Aksum, or you can join the YouTube channel directly at even $1 a month, or of course, aksum.substack.com. Oh, okay. There it is. So today's special guest is Sofonias Casahunwerke. He's back and we're going to be doing something uh, interesting. Looks like my Google Meet, which I record a lot of these on, although sometimes I use um, StreamYard and other services, is allowing for captions as well as a transcript. We'll see how that goes. You know, we're experimenting, but I'm also playing him in some chess. Sofonias, how are you? How are you, Hannah? I'm doing good. Bene, grazie a Dio. Como esta? Bene, bene. Grazie per avermi. A pleasure to be here. <laughs> to be Excellent. back, I might say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. I've done your program once. You've done my program once. Exactly. And we can talk about that and reflect on it while we have fun and play chess. So I'm going to initiate the chess game. So it's going to be yep. added extra uh, pressure for our conversation. But hopefully yep. we're going to have him share his screen so that you guys could see it as well. So I'm taking my first move here from e1 to e4 with my pawn i hope that that has uh, affected you on your side and as you're thinking of what chess moves to make i wanted to ask you how the adwa celebration in italy was for you this year it was kind of like a good one because celebrating adwa in italy is just like <laughs> it's complicated right <laughs> but um i I don't think like we had like a major celebration at the end of the day because I think the Ethiopian community here is a little bit fractured. But um, I had some Italians, like cultural Italian, like a cultural event organized by Ita by a group of Italians that I was invited in, and that was like the the main guest also there. So I had a moment to reflect on the 127th victory of Erdogan over of Ethiopia over Italy. And my life growing up in Ethiopia and the Italian culture, and it was a good time. It was a good time, I might say. Yeah, we we kind of deep dove on that subject, so I don't want to go over it again um, too much. But in case people are kind of seeing this as a standalone episode, could you give a kind of uh, brief biological sketch of you know why those like the kind of uh, confluence or liminal space between Italy and Ethiopia is important to you? Yeah, well, so I was born in Ethiopia and in the Bansi, as I told you earlier, and my parents, I don't know why, they sent me to this, like, um, uh, an Italian school. There, There's, like, an international Italian school in Addis Ababa, where, like, um, the whole curriculum is based on the Italian state schools, like, back uh, back in Italy. So our, our you're going to have to take, yeah, here we go. Yeah, I, I was I was in the other game. It's very weird because I was frozen. You weren't moving. You were speaking. Yeah, and exactly. Your timer wasn't there, but it looked like there were a couple games. But now it looks like everything is good. I had uh, moved my pawn from E1 to E4, and it looks like you did it from uh, E or from E2 rather, and you did it from E7 to E5. In case anyone is listening audio only, uh, there's no way we're going to screen cap all the <laughs> chess moves after that. But I am moving my knight from G1 to uh what is this here f3 <laughs> but yeah please continue about talking about your uh, parents decision to send you to an italian school yeah so i was like so i went to an italian school which had like had a major like a big impact on my life because at the end of the day we didn't have like a normal Ita like ethiopian curriculum and everything we we studied italian history italian culture day in and day out and when you go to school and you're, when your teachers are from all all over Italy and when you speak uh, with your friends in Italian on a daily basis, that's going to have a little bit of like, you know, influence in your life. So. That's right. And last I, time we talked a lot about all the different languages, just as a brief recap, can you talk about kind of all the languages you either speak or read and how you <laughs> would kind of like rate rate your strength? In, in those yeah. different languages because because yeah. we did have a we had a debate we had a debate about you know orthodox christianity and protestant exactly. christianity on your channel 
And obviously exactly. the the language we chose for that, I think so it could reach the most audiences is English, but we could have exactly. easily done it in Amharic as well. You know, in Italian, it would it would not make sense. <laughs> uh, or you could speak Italian, I could speak Spanish, and still your Italian would be way better than my Spanish. Yeah, exactly. No, so I, I, I speak fluent Amharic, that's like my mother tongue. On my side that I speak English, I speak Italian, I speak a little bit of French, I speak classical Greek and Latin. That's all the languages I speak of. And I, I learned them all in this Italian school and uh, that I frequented, I, I went to, and uh, it was a good ride for you me. Frequent because the, yeah, I frequent the <laughs> Italiano. And uh, it was like a good ride for me at the end of the day. It's, like, like, it's not like I, 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 I had issues with it because it has affected me as a torture. Like it has opened the good, good, good doors to me. And it has also shown me who I am as an Ethiopian. That is like the most important thing I got, I think, from this experience. Yeah, that's, that's very good. So I remember earlier today, you were to switch gears asking me about the Protestant doctrine of Sola Scriptura and my thoughts on it. And I've told you, obviously, we had that conversation. Of course, I don't mm -hmm. affirm uh, such a doctrine, but it's it's interesting. I think the way people approach this is very different, and I would like to do it in a superior fashion. So, I don't know if you've ever engaged with, you know, I think there were several books that Martin Luther, which as a reminder for my audience, I went to a Lutheran middle school, so I, I learned a lot about Martin Luther over three years, going to Lutheran chapel uh, every Wednesday for three years, and then their Lutheran Bible study, but. Mm -hmm. um, you know, ultimately I rejected what they had, but I appreciate, you know, especially one of my, uh, shout out to one of my old Bible teachers. It was a youth pastor who grew up in a, a trailer park, I believe somewhere outside of Philadelphia and uh, later lived in, I think, uh, Malibu or something like that. And whenever he was in California, I could be wrong about where he was in, in Cali, but he was from somewhere in the East Coast. And I think it was Philadelphia because I later met him funny enough uh, after he was fired from our school. At, mm. uh, at a chocolate factory because he was homies still with one of the history teachers and uh, we, we kind of all linked up to say hi to him again but I think his name was Mr. J is what we'd call him or Pastor J and um, he used to have us write when I was in sixth grade a hundred words about the Bible every week okay. and I'm, I'm sure that had you know some impact on me but one of the things exactly. that I, you know I, I disagree with with Luther is that he wanted to say sola scriptura or scripture alone, mm -hmm. but he also wanted to get rid of certain books of even the smallest 66 book uh, biblical canon. And, mm -hmm. and even books, you know, a lot of times those number reductions from 81 to 73 to 66, all the different biblical canons yeah. are about the, the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible. But he wanted to even get rid of several books in the New Testament, things like uh, mm -hmm. I think Second Peter and Jude and and James. I wonder if you've ever come across. I'm sure famous verses in James that people argue about. But I'd love to hear any of your interpretations on any chapters of the Book of James or anything in in First mm -hmm. Jude or anything in um, Second Jude or uh, excuse me, there's only one Jude, uh, Second Peter mm -hmm. or anything like that. What well, to just like say a few words about Martin Luther? It's like he was like a controversial figure. Let's start with that one. He was like, um, you know, oh, you're about to take my queen. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was more like, that's right. That's right. <laughs> I was thinking about the podcast and you're about to take up all my queen. <laughs> Two for one special. That's what happens <laughs> when you think about Martin Luther, you get your queen taken. <laughs> because that's what he did is because after he did his heresies, he went and he he literally convinced uh, female nuns to quit and uh, leave the monastery. And I think he took he one of them with him. One. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He married one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but at the end of the day, I'm like, you're a butt. Really think about my queen. <laughs> I was <should> <laughs> like concentrating more on the game than on, than on the podcast. No, but to just say a few words, like I appreciate what Martin Luther did did like with the reformation because I have like I'm still evolving on the figure to be honest with you like he was like a controversial figure but at the mm -hmm. end of the day he was like a devoted Catholic and me going to an Italian school and the whole Italian culture like in Ethiopia our culture is more like more influenced by the Ethiopian Orthodox Church right and uh, the Italian culture is very very like grounded in 
nurtured and just like shed by the Catholic Church, which I appreciate that. Uh, and also, like when when I went to entire school, like we had like a, um, twice a week an hour for religion. We studied like uh, there was like religion. We studied like uh, Christian theology, and our teacher was like a Catholic priest at the end of the day, and he was like. Um, you know, he he told us like he wanted us to show the Catholic version of the, uh, uh, the Christianity. So I kind of like grew up, grew up in that in that too. So I kind of like I have like I I'm, I'm conflicted because I don't know that I love the Catholic Church. I love the history. I love what it has produced in the world. But at the end of the day, there was like. A real corruption in the 16th century and what Martin Luther King did with the Reformation, I think it was like to go back to the basics. So it's an it's a very nuanced conversation where it, it just there's it's not like a black and white conversation uh, black and white conversation where there's like one is the the bad guy the villain the other one is the good. But I kind of like agree with the Reformation points. I mean, salvation alone by grace through um through christ alone for the glory of god alone through only like scripture as only our only compass uh, that guides us in our faith and you know he was a controversial figure so did he try to yeah i don't expect you I, obviously i don't yeah. expect you to affirm like every part of his life like convincing exactly. a nun to quit being a nun uh, probably which, not by the way i agree thing. Yeah, probably not away. the holiest thing, although I can imagine yeah. some world in which if she was going to stumble anyway, maybe he saves her. I could see some argument for him. And even w as being a Protestant, you don't have to affirm everything. Like, it's not like you guys have, you know, saints in the understanding of like the canonization of formal saints in the Catholic Church or something like that. And this whole mm -hmm. conversation, by the way, is kind of uh, different from the conversation in the Orthodox Church. So mm -hmm. for, for us in Ethiopia, it's totally different of the orthodox uh, mentality or phronima it's mm -hmm. it's a very different mentality but i i just wonder if you and and again i know you're allowed to have evolving views on the subject but exactly. do you, have you ever heard or read about how he specifically wanted to take new testament yeah. books out like jude like second mm -hmm. peter and like james and i wonder if you ever find them and, and you know part of the reason behind that is it's said that the the kind of Protestant understanding of what the simple gospel message is not kind mm -hmm. of clearly stated enough for those people. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the Orthodox Church, obviously we accept all those things as as scripture and much more like Enoch <laughs> and mm -hmm. Jubilees and, and many other mm -hmm. things. So what do you think about him trying to edit the biblical canon? Because that what? gets to the source of like what is scripture itself and, and any thoughts exactly. you have on those books. Exactly. But I mean... We're about, when you're talking about a topic like this, the sources you, are, you, you go to read or to do your research are important. So, I mean, if you go to a Catholic sources, of course they're not going to say good things about Martin Luther, right? I mean, <laughs> that's like clear. And um, so I, I'm like, yeah, it's, it's a difficult conversation to have this as a Protestant because I appreciate Martin Luther King, Martin Luther, Martin Luther, Martin Luther for what he did. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's okay. I, I was, I wasn't gonna correct you. It's okay. You did that early. Yeah. So I wasn't gonna correct you because, as because you said, you speak multiple languages, and I'm not gonna judge your your English no, harshly. <laughs> don't worry about it. But at the end of the day, Martin Luther King, who's by birth, his name was another. He changed his name after visiting Germany. I don't know if you know that the black. The black civil strike, uh, the American civil strike, uh, civil rights um, leader. Uh, leader, exactly. After, I mean, he changed his name to Martin Luther because of the reform, the impact the reformation had his, uh, on his life. So, but uh, to just uh, to just to just answer your question, I mean, Martin Luther was a controversial figure. It depends the sources you read about him because at the end of the day, if you go and read about the sources from let's say you know catholic sources of course they're not gonna say 
good things about. So are there Protestant like sources that say that he did not want to take books out of the New Testament canon that mm. was 27 listed by Alex uh, uh, Athanasius of Alexandria? I haven't read them till now, but at the end of the day, my starting point is that like, the New Testament is equal. They're like 27 books and they're the same for every Christian denomination. It doesn't matter what they are, Protestant, Catholic, or Orthodox, the 27 books of the New Testament where Christianity is founded and grounded in are the same. Like every little word in it, every structure of the canon books are just like the same for all of us. So, so you I accept mean, the can, biblical canon of Athanasius of Alexandria? I accept the 27 books of the New Testament. That's like yeah. my final. Which he's the one first in history. And that's an so, Orthodox source. That's not a Catholic source. That's that's the Bishop of Alexandria, Egypt. Mm -hmm. He's the first one in history through his Paschal letter or his mm -hmm. letter during the Easter season where he listed mm -hmm. and named the 27 books. So he's historic for that yeah. reason. He also gave Ethiopia its first bishop, thus entering it hierarchically within larger Christendom. Although there, there okay. likely were Christians before that that just weren't formally in the hierarchy. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean... Um, yeah, as a soldier. So, I mean, I, that's an important fact, uh, the historical uh, fact he gave me. But at the end of the day, as a soldier, like, I, the starting points are more important for me than, like, the, uh, about this controversy about Martin Luther. He tried to, like, cancel some books from the New Testament. He didn't cancel. Let's talk about what the real books say. I mean, the message of the gospel, not about argue about this. Kind of like silly things i might say well it's not it's not silly because if you believe that scripture mm -hmm. is there alone mm -hmm. and you have to you have to say like whose interpretation because from jewish times to christian times there have always mm -hmm. been debates about what books are within the biblical canon so it's important mm -hmm. in, in that sense and it's also important yeah. in terms of who are you granting authority to because the general kind of protestant idea is that each individual has uh and is kind of the the magisterium each individual no, has its own authority true. well in the sense of like who gets to interpret scripture that's what i hear a yeah. lot of protestants saying and so yeah. who gets to, the first level of interpreting scripture is determining yeah. what is scripture and exactly. so if you agree with the 27 book new testament canon that's great yeah. that's the canon yeah. listed by athanasius which i agree to yeah. as well but yeah. luther from all the sources i have read did not and so that would be maybe a point in which you would call him a heretic for not accepting the 27 a book bible and you guys would have different interpretations but that that's that's interesting so uh we we can move on to yeah. uh, a beautiful what, politics just, again and the, you can tell me point out, yeah but just to point out i'm getting i'm like as i told you Martin Luther was a controversial figure i mean he changed the course of history with, with what he did like he changed so he impacted the whole world with what he did so i i'm like evolving on the figure as i told you if he, i'm like learning new things about him on a daily basis and so we're gonna have to like i'm gonna have like to see what um um like i'm gonna have like to take time and do a good research before i like arrive that's fine and I don't, I don't need a definitive statement on yeah, him but i can exactly. just tell you in, adva day, in advance of your research i can yeah. see that you're going to have friction with him about his biblical canon you can still maybe in your view think that he did more good than bad because he he brought it from latin into german the vulgar language for the people to speak and uh, you, you might just still think he did a good job, but you can yeah. also potentially disagree with him on the biblical canon, which I hope you will do on your own independent research. And to move on to kind of more recent politics, you recently finished a term in political office in your local region. Can you tell us what your local region is and what your political position was and, and what that environment was like? So yeah, it's a, it's a fascinating story. So I was born in Ethiopia, right? So I grew up in Addis Ababa, went to an Italian school, spoke daily Italian, absorbed, I might say, the Italian culture. Then I, when I was 15, just to recap a little bit of my history, when I was like 15, I started working with, um, um, with, uh, with the Italian, um, with the Italian embassy as like, as, a, as an interpreter. Uh, right uh, when I was still in high school, I used to be like the interpreter for the uh, Italian military attaché office. 
And then after like uh, after I finished like graduating high school, they offered me a full time job uh, as the personal assistant of the Italian ambassador. And I worked there till like 2013 before they granted me a scholarship to come study in Rome. So I arrived in Rome in 2013, fresh off the boat, fresh off the boat. Um, I'm enrolling uh, in college, studying and working at the same time. And then, like, I started like participating in politics, getting into politics at the same time. And in 2018, in 2018 my party like decided to- What um, was your party? The Italian Democratic Party. It's like a center left Italian. So when I say left, European left is very different from American left. Yeah. <laughs> Just it, it, explain, European. explain what the European center left and right, and particularly that I imagine the Italian one is maybe different than the French one. Kind of one more European left there, like they have a coalition that grip like on a bunch of things. Like their their main their main objective are like economical things. They are they agree like like their whole thing is like lefty politics is like they analyze everything through economics, right? So it's just like they want to like um put away the the disparities that exist between people at the end of the day. But they're not like Walk left. <laughs> I understand. It sounds like in America what we would call classical liberalism, and in fact, what the, the exactly. Austrian economist uh, Ludwig von Mises has a famous book called Liberalismo yeah. or Liberalism. Yeah, liberal. Liberalism. Yeah. That, that is that. That is. They're like classical yeah. liberals. They're, yeah. they're liberals. So you're more sense, socially. You're more socially, you're more socially conservative. You're more socially conservative than yeah. the American left. Exactly. They are more socially um, conservative than the American left. They're like classical liberal. They're like liberal mm -hmm. in the true sense of the term. They're like for individual rights. They like they see good in immigration. They want everybody to be treated equally under the uh, equally under the law. You know, they're just like basic stuff. So the Italian Democratic Party they just gave me this this opportunity to run in 2018, and I run and the people voted for me and like i was like the first black african ethiopian guy to be elected in the regional council and i served like for five years and wow. i i just finished Very my easy. term like yeah i just finished my term in like in january of uh, of this year where at the end of the unfortunately i might say the right the center right party won't back the so we're gonna to... we're gonna come back to that when I ask you about the prime minister. What yeah. what does it mean like to have served five years? What type of and and this is just the area of Rome as a city. So I, I run like so Italy is divided into like twenty one. So the, the administrative state of Italy is like unlike the U.S. where it's like federal here, it's more like a unitary government. So it, Italy is divided into twenty one regions, and my region is called Regione Lazio, Lazio region with its headquarters, the capital city of Rome. And I run in the southeastern district of Rome to represent the people in the south district of Rome in the regional council. So we have the region, then we have the provinces, then we have the municipality, the city. So city, province, and region, and then there is like the unitary state. And it was like a beautiful experience for me because I had like to I can like I had the amazing opportunity to work like to be I was in that committees of like tourism and culture and oversight over the executive and it was a beautiful experience I mean you I never like envisioned to be in politics but to be yeah. like be elected after coming to a new country and just staying there for five years it's just crazy it's were your crazy parents stuff. shocked and surprised when you initially did that and yeah, what type of surprised. what type of issues did you what type of issues did you work on for the southeast region there yeah so my parents were very surprised but they kind of knew the kind of kid i was like since i was like a little i was always like experimenting things even the fact when i was 15 i started working for the Italian embassy my parents were like super proud of me and i used to work and study at the same time so they were like you know, in Ethiopia we say you know, I guess. <laughs> we are right. like very much even though you're like a little kid. Mm -hmm. So I kinda of like grew up in that kind of environment at the end of the day. So that helped me a lot. So they were like super proud of me and they were not surprised, my dad said. I knew you could like you would put something like that, you put off something like that. So 
it was a great a, for me it was like for my personal life my personal like life and for my personal career it was like a huge path forward for me because it had, it had like gave me opportunity to work on politics and to see things from like far behind what happens behind the scenes it was like an amazing opportunity so i worked like for the people from but um on the legislative i worked on the uh, culture and tourism committee some might say and we as you know like rome is one of the uh most visited cities in the world and we have like seven million people on a yearly basis that come to rome to just visit so we worked on like policies to like to make it more hospitable to make it more business friendly to make it uh friendly for the workers for the employers for the because at the end of the day rome lives of the tourism so it's not behind the tourism there's like restaurants hotels there are like a lot of people that work in it so we you know we we discovered stakeholders we drafted policies we 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 went on to put like enact laws to make it more business friendly environment it was like a huge, huge thing for me. That's excellent. And did you receive any pushback from the other parties while you were working? Um, so kind of, but at the end of the day, like there's not like that kind of like big difference. Like in the US, for example, if you vote Democrat and if you vote Republican, there's like huge difference, right? In your body yeah. wise. Animosity. Right? It's just an animosity, but also like on your worldview, on your philosophy. It's just like you can like a guy that votes Democrat and the guy that like votes Republican, they have like a very, very huge like some people gap say they wouldn't even wallet. date each other. <laughs> In this case, yeah, I'm afraid about that. Yeah, but here, thank God, we don't have that kind of like huge gaps between the political parties. I don't think the society is not fractured in that kind of way. I don't know. I don't know if that makes it clear. It's mm -hmm. just like everybody's on the same page then yeah, yeah there are like some things yeah maybe the there's right more coalition part. the way we would call that is there's more coalition building like you're yeah you're, there's you're more coalition. To work together yeah there, there's more coalition and the on the on certain on certain basic values it's just it's universal i mean nobody's like gonna like create problems on tourism and culture it's just like well it's funny you say that because i'll tell you say. like a a very los angeles like issue and greater Southern mm -hmm. California issue is there are a lot of like immigrants who are who I call micro entrepreneurs. And so okay. um, they would sell food items like, uh, you know, I could say what they are, they would not mean a lot to you like elotes <laughs> and other types of food items. Uh, you can't mm -hmm. move through check because my queen is there, by the way. <laughs> okay, okay. That's so, why you're struggling I'll to castle. Treating... Yeah, you try okay. to do that that long side or far side castle, but my queen is not permitting okay. you. Exactly, exactly, um, exactly. But but like uh, you know, there are a lot of Hispanic like street vendors who would will try to some 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 fresh uh you know fruta, some fresh fruit or some some uh corn with like spice on it with butter and and other types of street food and mm -hmm. you know their citizen status uh may be questionable um the local government might demand on the left that they have some type of permit whereas on the right there are organizations for example like the institute for justice that would say like they have mm -hmm. kind of a, a free speech or first amendment right to be doing yeah. uh commerce there mm -hmm. exactly and so they they um they have disagreements you'd you'd like even someone like an a low income self-employed uh, mm -hmm. you know, let's say Mexican immigrant in South yeah. LA, you would think yeah. like it's the perfect basket case for a progressive politician, but that they would argue with someone maybe more mm -hmm. libertarian or classically liberal minded who would say, yeah. let's promote them by either making like this, the cheapest fee possible if they need a permit, or if we're going to yeah. make it a first amendment issue, make them yeah. not required to have a, a permit at all. And, and heck, if yeah. they're making less than 50K, like th maybe the IRS shouldn't harass them for income tax either. You know, like yeah. there are different things that you could you could do and play with. So it's interesting that you're able to coalition build because that's definitely like even this type of issue, like tourism yeah. and, and micro entrepreneurship would, yeah. would have friction in the in the United States. So now yeah. can you move on to talking about the um, the party that took over? and and yeah. what that means because i think you you mentioned what is it like it's not bicameral so like even like the the way the yeah, system works like yeah, it sounds it's like it's an all or nothing i don't know if it's called unicameral or how you'd call it in italian or in english and the, and from there could you talk about 
the new uh, prime minister, Georgia Meloni. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. You pronounced it word correctly. You got it on the first, on the first action, <laughs> on the first. <laughs> and now you're threatening <laughs> my queen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> my turn right now. <laughs> but to, just to point out, like, I, I follow, like, American politics from, like, on a daily basis, I just like I have a couple of podcasts I follow and everything, and I don't I don't see that kind of like you know division in the Italian society, and that's a good thing for me. I mean, I, at the end of the day, I see it as a good thing because you know there there should be certain things that are like universal where everybody should agree, right? There are some there should be certain values at the end of the day. I think that we should not hold like hold on. We shouldn't be all fighting on the on the little things so yeah so we so the 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 state is fractured that fact so we have a bicameral legislature at the at the national level then every region has its own legislative which is a unicameral one one branch of legislative body unicameral and um so the the governor is voted by a universal vote everybody everybody votes and the the guy who gets the majority the cyclist majority wins and takes we are takes all winner takes all kind of like election program mm -hmm. on the regional level and then on the national level it's a, like a proportional representation of the state so uh, there's like that kind of like gap and um we 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 governed the region of lazio from like 2018 till 2023 for five years and then the party here we have like a Various parties, not like a dual, um, a dual party like in the United States. We don't we don't have only a Democrat and uh, like a, a Republican. Here, even the like the center left, there are like five six parties in the left. The same thing goes for the right. There are like four three major parties that represent the Italian right. So the party of the current prime minister, which is called Fratelli d'Italia, Brothers of Italy, which has like a fascist roots, by the way. And okay, so you agree like, with that? You agree with that representation? Because I've heard it in the American media that way, and I wanted to see if you were going to dispel that or if you agree no, with that. They're like fascist, fascists. Like they're like the good old fascist boys. They 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 take their heritage from the fascism, and they kind of like you know it was populism at the end of the day. I think it was like the bad immigrants are taking like uh, over Italy. That was like the main thing that like pushed voters to come out and vote for her but yeah i mean it's just like yeah it's a fascist party i'm not like happy for it but uh, uh they won the election the national election and now they took over also of my region so yeah i I'm forget what the, i forget what the italian was and i'd like to hear your definition of like what you mean by fascism like if you don't differentiate them from mussolini or if they're some type of mussolini light but they used words i think that meant like uh god which is something like what dio yeah, uh, fam fam family dio, and country yeah, yeah. yeah. Say, dio, say it again say it again dio patria e familia dio patria, yeah, dio, familia. patria and familia how's familia. my italian <laughs> yes, <I mean. laughs> so what what like do those country family yeah do those That's words like trigger you yeah, do those no, words they trigger, trigger like, what, me, but what, they don't do really they mean, mean it. They don't really mean it. I mean, when they say God, okay. they, they mean like religion, so Christianity, right? But they don't really, they use Christianity as like a cudgel to like to define the society. But then, like, they don't stand really for Christian values at the end of the day. Yeah, they, they may be homophobic, they want to transfer family at the end of the day, but they're not they're not big on welcoming the stranger, you know what I mean? Also, mm -hmm. that's part of the Christianity, right? They're not big yeah. on loving your neighbor your neighbor might be someone yeah. who doesn't share your that's your same beliefs so someone who doesn't like have your same world view you as a christian you're you're supposed to love them like to treat them equally right they're not mm -hmm. big on those things they just want they have like their own version of christianity which is like i don't like people throw this word especially in our days like lightly but it's like a very white supremacist version or like understanding or i might say interpretation of christianity you know i mean they just take the the christianity that like fits their agenda but they're not like huge on christian values at the, at the end of the day and yeah, no, that, that that's interesting because normally i would think you like those words like dio patria and 
Familia. Familia. Yeah, I am for I, as a Christian, like, but yeah, I, I so it's I just fake. It's just fake. Yeah. At all. yeah, it's just like they just use it as a casual. They 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 hide behind religion to like to push their agenda, but that doesn't they they their objective, their real agenda is not like the Christian bias or to protect the Christian heritage of Europe or Italy. It's just like plain old fascism. They just want power. The the the, like, the dealing with the stranger the bit thing. that you said is very interesting because it's mm -hmm. a thread within American libertarianism and liberalism where mm -hmm. I would say the issues of abortion and the itch issue of immigration are the things that separate classical liberals the most. And I wonder if it's going to be the same for you in Italy. And it's funny whenever I see like Europeans would speak on the abortion issue and mm -hmm. you know call the people in the right in america crazy but then in in europe they would have stricter laws <laughs> so exactly. uh, I, it's it's fascinating to me uh and i think it's a nuanced discussion but i wonder uh on this issue of immigration um, yeah. she met recently with a uh, prime minister of ethiopia abi ahmed and yeah. i know you shared a lot of those uh pictures on social media as well as as i did after i had alerted you to it to, so that you yeah. could see it and, and check it out because obviously you understand the italian situation a thousand times better than i do and yeah. some people were saying that the meeting between them was nefarious in a sense I, i'm not going to comment on prime minister abi's kind of motives and psychology because i think Mm -hmm. um those have been unfolding in a, in a very anti-ethiopian way where before i was more on the fence and not wanting to to delve into some of what potential conspiracies might be transpiring i'm i'm firmly on the other side now where i he's he's fully lost my trust and it seems like the the country is uh disintegrating in some sense and i'm i'm a little skeptical of the future but bringing it the italian situation she seems mm -hmm. to be doing some type of deals with him and what people called nefarious about it is like it's not that she cares about ethiopia or ethiopians but she wants ethiopians to kind of stay in ethiopia and out of italy and so kind she of. will help them in any way possible in order yeah. to make that happen by yeah. helping them uh, bolster them. So I wonder what you think about that because in the past in America there have been yeah. kind of temporary alliances between people considered white supremacists, white nationalist, whatever the the term may be, uh, yeah. like members of the Klan and stuff, uh, with Pan Africanists, with Black nationalists. For exactly. example, there was a uh, co fundraising that people would do to send Black people back to Africa. And, yeah, Marcus and Garvey if that is a mutual, Garvey, yeah. yeah, Marcus Garvey, yeah. Exactly. If it's if it's a mutual goal and desirable, do you see it yeah. as nefarious, or do you appreciate that? Just talk about this subject for me. Immigration. Yeah, I mean, so then, so I have like followed like the the whole trip of Prime Minister Abi in Italy. I was part of that. Like, so I'm a journalist, so I have certain amount of privileges, access where you are like invited to when uh, they're like. Um, come, um, when they speak with the journals, um, Punto di Conferenza, my entire <laughs> the whole thing is an entire is kind of yeah. Ben, but, no uh, problem. Yeah, no, when they non c'è like, problema, uh, fratello. <laughs> no, but I mean, at the end of the day, the meeting was good. He had a he had a good say in Italy, I might say. They they signed two or three bilateral corporations. And by the way, the Italian state also gave them a lot of money for, for development in aid. And um, uh, they're not loans. They're like free money, like with no interest. And uh, uh, that was, I think, a good thing at the end of the day. Those, like, if that regardless resources. of the motive. Exactly, regardless of the whole motive. Like, uh, if, the, if, the, if the resources are signed, will go to the people. I think that's a that's a, that's a win-win solution for us. But at the end of the day, she also said in um in a um, in a press release with a uh, with the Ethiopian with the Ethiopian Prime Minister that like she values the historical ties that Italy has with Ethiopia and she want to work on that and um, the current crisis that happened in the north of Ethiopia with the war in Tigray. She was happy that there was like a deal signed. Uh, the, the, the the conflict has ended peacefully uh, with the with the deal signed. And that was like, made you 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 take you'd expect that from like a head of government from a of an entire head government to say those like, you know, diplomatic words at the end of the day. But um, yeah, she she wants to strengthen the cooperation, the bilateral relationships between Ethiopia and Italy because she said they are very historic and 
um, there is like a huge Italian community present in Ethiopia, uh, which are very and it's a business oriented Italian community. So, so she want to like develop that a lot, and she's expected to make like to to visit Italy in the coming like three weeks, I think, because she has been to Abu Dhabi in India uh, lately, and I think that her next trip will be like to the Horn of Africa, and she said like Ethiopia is like a fundamental country to for the stabilization of the horn so she she will like parrot those western you know same western western po foreign policy also in ethiopia i don't know if, they, if she won't change that um but like what was the your other question about the so i mean i could push it in another direction on the same subject she's been in power since october 2022 we're in march yeah. of 2023 23. it's been about six months or so mm -hmm. so has fascism descended upon you in a domestic policies the way that I you mean, had expected or are you what? surprised like and you think she's just kind of taking things but very slowly and very almost ethiopian palace intrigue style yeah so like in Italy, in the Italian politics, they say like there's like a big difference when you are like in the position when you when you and when you take power and become government. And she's being very institutional in her ways, very diplomatic. She isn't to talk like that when she was in power in, in opposition because I know her. I used to read like newspapers on a daily basis on her like on the on the uh, on the things she used to say about immigration, about family, about certain values or certain views. Now she's more like, you know, diplomatic, she she's more nuanced and she's more like institution institutionalized when she speaks. So she can't speak when she was like uh, in um, uh, in opposition at the end of the day. But has fashion has fascism came back in Italy? No, because like the well, fascism is like the movement that has ended, but also fascism is like kind of like a type of mentality, right? I mean, to always so it's find... a neo-fascism. It's not. It's not. It's you, not like you, the plain. It's old not the same fascism. thing as Benito Mussolini. No, it's not the same thing because it's like in 2023, nobody will accept such, such things. But there are like certain, in certain laws, in certain, in certain perspective in certain instances where you know they have they have still linked with that kind of like fascism was also racism at the end of the day you know what i mean it's just like um so it just means you disagree on immigration because it, honestly it sounds like she's doing a lot of things that you like so i don't think you would be that yeah, much of a fan a of a fascist as, as a, a proud ethiopian Christians, yeah socially like as a conservative christian she's for the traditional family she wants to help family and everything i kind of like those aspects but also, I am liberal in the sense, like I believe in liberty, I believe in individual rights and individual liberty. So I don't want. But immigration, right? Like, like I, what I'm going to push you back because society, I, you know? I think the word fascism is used too often. So yeah. what I want to push back Especially on, what I want to push back on is it seems like you just have a fundamental disagreement on immigration. Is there anything besides immigration that she does that's deeply offensive to you? about immigration yeah i mean i agree like immigration is one of the topics i disagree with uh with good, uh, good game by the way i just won <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> you, can really just... you can stop sharing your screen you can stop sharing your screen wait we got we got a rematch because i was like yeah. taking on the podcast it's okay but i me, know I'm bad, no. yeah no but i mean fascism like in Italy, we say like there's like the fashion with the with the uppercase F, that was like a movement that ended like in the 1945 with the with the uh, with the with the Italian Crushing people winning by the Americans. Well, yeah, exactly. The Americans played also a role, but also there's like fascism with the lowercase F. That means okay. that was like kind of a mentality where Italy first. What does Italy first mean? Italians mm -hmm. first. You know what I mean? It's just like it's the same version of America first, or like you know. Uh, the same thing that Trump had on his movement, like. Okay, so would you yeah, refer to the, the would you refer to the Trumpist movement in the United States as a lowercase f fascist movement? Kinda. I didn't know you kinda. felt that way. I didn't know you felt kinda. that way. Kinda a little bit. Okay. Kinda. Okay, I didn't know I mean, you felt that way. Yeah, because kinda a little bit when you well, it's very different. Because American politics, as I said, like is very different than Italian politics. But when they say like America first, 
it means somebody has to be like second, right? Somebody has to be third. Like um, if you believe like in the equality of all nations, I mean, you don't you don't push that kind of idea. So like in Italy, they say Italians first in everything. Italians first in everything. But yeah, I think it's an idea of... because yeah, yeah. Stream, Mainstream culture does like does it accept the, the mainstream public culture like a black guy like me as an Italian? You know what I mean? It's like the same thing uh, in America when they say American first. Um, who are the real Americans? That like a Hispanic can be accepted in that like group? You know what I mean? It's just like they play on those words because that's the lowercase fascism for me. I see. I I think we have a fundamental disagreement about the term because for me it's like fascism earlier you said you know the liberals the, you, you know your center left crew in italy mm -hmm. view things from an economic lens which is where yeah. i do i do it from a, exactly. the lens of an austrian economist especially in the misesian school the hayekian school the rothbardian school and from that point of view uh fascism is kind of complete total control of the economy top down That's and strange. Uh, yeah. by the state and and if if i don't see that i don't see fascism and then you you have this question of like racism which is always uh, by putting yourself first does it make you inherently always uh, first and this question is where people always argue is what happened with uh, franco's spain and i forget the guy in portugal but portugal mm -hmm. the same thing as what happened in italy and germany clearly not even between italy and germany there's a yeah. difference of degree certainly and and perhaps arguably a difference in kind, but the type of things yeah. that that Germany did versus that Italy did. And both of them are different than Spain and Portugal, which pretty much sat out of yeah. all of the international atrocities and, and kept it as a as a domestic economic system, uh, yeah. which itself is kind of a bastardized left wing version of monarchy in, yeah, in exactly. the 20th century. So I think it's because people have a deep a seated uh you know the, i know you like michael knowles and michael knowles mm -hmm. was recently pontificating about the symbols that are being destroyed in the ms-13 shrines in el salvador by mm -hmm. the el salvador regime which he's the head of and is a great kind of uh, uh occident or excuse me uh, oriental despot or <laughs> a man of the east uh, you know, he's from Eastern Mediterranean, uh, kind of uh, Middle Eastern, Near Eastern background. He's been cracking down on them with the suspension of what human rights organizations call human rights. But he's mm -hmm. decreased the murder rate a lot. And what Michael yeah. Knowles was saying was like a lot of uh, these human rights uh, NGOs and a lot of uh, critics of uh, Naib Bukele, uh, the, the gentleman, the ruler of, of El Salvador, uh, the critics are often mentioning that he's an authoritarian. And Michael mm -hmm. Knowles of Daily Wire was saying, what does it mean to be an authoritarian? Be an authoritarian. And, and I, I would question the word fascism in this way. It seems to be just a critique of the centralization of power, but trying to use it in a pejorative word, like just kind of a, a slur for mm -hmm. people that you disagree with and exactly. i find it interesting that uh, that the fascism hasn't descended in the way capital f to italy that it, it does and i wonder if you think she had the the power and the means that she would try to resurrect that or she's comfortable with the as you say the lowercase f uh, fascismo well that's a good analysis um what it's I'm conflicted because at the end of the day, as a soldier, I agree with her on certain things that are like fundamental values, which I will not negotiate on things, right? Uh, but at the end of the day, I also like I am liberal in the true sense of the term. Like I believe in liberty, individual rights. So I don't want the state telling everybody what to do or like what is right or what is wrong. I don't. I don't want the moral the state to be the moral arbiter. I want the state to just protect and guarantee all the rights that are reserved for everybody. You know what I mean? So here in Europe, in, here in Europe, like the racial links are very like they're very played on with words. What do we? What do, what do I mean by that? Like the racial thing here in here in Europe is like grounded in the politics. Like it is like a white people slam. That's like the main. That's like the mainstream the mainstream understanding of like the casual Italian. I mean, at the end of the day, they think they will, I don't think that we will 
never have in Europe. I mean, the Great Britain is like a different case where they have where they have like the first Indian prime minister. Uh, but I don't think like in the US where we you have the first black president in the new league, like in the, even the next century, to be honest with you, because it's so grounded in- You don't in think the, in 20 years you could be the first Italian prime minister? I mean, black Italian prime minister, that's gonna be a hard one. <laughs> But I agree with you when you say like with the with with the Michael Knowles and us because today the left uses like the word white supremacy fascism for everything saying there are only two genders now it's con considered white supremacy you know what I mean it's just like that's fascist ideas so the terms have become loose and they have lost their terms but we should not like close our eyes because there are real people behind that that like still have that agenda and they still think like they don't believe like everybody's equal born equal with like certain unalienable rights i believe that everybody's like every human being is equal but there are certain people that no. like you know they no, no, play that, those that, words. that's fair and i i think we can agree on the general principle that these terms are used too loosely but then we exactly. can disagree on any specific case and i'm yeah. frankly ignorant of the italian case so i can't make a full decision i'm reading everything in in translation although i do read some of the italian like i said it's it's even easier for me to read italian than to hear italian and mm -hmm. uh with the little bit of spanish i have i can i can you know do my best i'm sure i'll butcher some certain pronunciations and i've learned some over yeah. time like the way you guys turn a C into Che. I've noticed yeah. that someone corrected me on Twitter recently and I've seen it just with I've, Italian I've menus when that. I go to Italian restaurants in, in Los Angeles. But um, it's fine in this case that you you do kind of put her in that camp and that you're, you know, you're on alert because of the rhetoric that you've seen as a person who's actually served in the Italian government, which gives you a lot yeah. of subject matter um, expertise to to be able to to know the difference and to, to see that. So I think I think that's a, a fair way to put it. I agree with that. I mean, yeah, I agree with that. What um, I mean with the points you said, I, yeah, I mostly agree with that. I I concur with that. I I just I just I mean other than that, I just want people to just not be like taken advantage of because there are like people they they just they will sell you everything. They will sell you values to have your vote at the end of the day. So I just I have seen that. Uh, especially around the conservative Christians in the U.S., where they're like, where they say they stand for Christianity or for Christian values, but at the end of the day, they push another agenda. They they're more worried about immigration that will change the country. That's not, like as a Christians, we shouldn't like think like that. You know what I mean? It's, it's, yeah, yeah. They 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 think of uh, their ethnicity as something is essentially to be preserved and they see exactly. politicians they... trying to erase that position in Italy, exactly. you know, not necessarily whiteness, but Italianness would Italian be that, that thing, which would coincide with that. Although I know there are internal debates between the Northern Southern access of, exactly. of Italy about that too. I don't know if it's starts in Naples or just in Sicily, but I know no, there are those yeah. arguments as well. Yeah. So if, if there's mean, anything that... you can say about the idea of, what is it to because i think a lot of them just want to cut immigration off now but then it gets mm -hmm. to your question what about the people that are there like do you need exactly. a parent to be there in the united states people even people i admire like ron paul have wanted to mm -hmm. repeal the 14th amendment which would mean that you are not the given a citizenship true. status just because you're born there so someone like me i have two of my parents born in ethiopia potentially my citizenship would be questioned even though i've spent 32 years in the united states so i wonder mm -hmm what is to the best of your knowledge like what does it mean to be a citizen in italy and is exactly. it this kind of dichotomy between those who are you know migrants or non-citizens and those are who are citizens like what does that mean and that might be where the friction is uh in addition to wanting to stem the flow of uh, immigration going forward i mean to just like to recap your point of like birthright citizenship so for example my party in italy pushed for that law we call it you soli in the latin term you soli like uh right of the uh, of the territory we, if you are born in italy automatically in italian right away and her party was like the first party that came out against it because and they're like playing racial you know racial policy but saying you know if we go down down that road over the night the next 40 50 years italy won't be italy like italians won't have like the same taste it will change 
like democratically the country. So they're very but like worried about that. And I think that triggers all of our policy. You know what I mean? That is like the like the left sees like the policies for an economic lens. Her and her party sees like everything through that kind of like racial lens to be what it means to be Italian, Italian is the heritage and everything. Which by the way, I agree in a certain way culturally, yes. But at the end of the day, we live like in a modern state too. So there are like certain rights that should be reserved for everybody, not just for like, you know, certain people. We don't have like, uh, it's not like in the federal system. We're just, <laughs> we're like, we're, we're in the modern times where everybody has certain rights that are like fundamental and inevitable. And that is like my whole point. I wanted to like, to make sure that like, people understand. Yeah. yeah. Just, Sad, like, sadly, we are not better. in the feudal system. That would be great. But if we are in Ethiopia, <laughs> oh, yeah. I know yeah. you're you're an Ethiopian descent person living mm -hmm. in Italy. If yeah. you were an Ethiopian, if you had to empathize and be in the shoes of this mm -hmm. party that you don't like, mm -hmm. do you think that as an Ethiopian nationalist, you would have yeah. any of the same sentiments that they do? Or do you think that you would advocate for the same things that you're advocating in Italy but were you in Ethiopia? I, I would be advocating for something they would advocate, like the heritage, the cultural heritage is important, like what, like the past and uh, like history has its effects on, on, on the course of, uh, uh, of on the course of, uh, of, of course of the country's like um, aspect, in various aspects. So I would, I would definitely agree on that, but I don't think Ethiopian nationalism like rooted in racial and ethnic atmosphere at the end of the day. I don't I don't see that on the whole African continent. I don't see I mean in the US there might be some like black nationalists that were argue otherwise, but I don't see our Ethiopian nationalists, which I am by the way, I'm an Ethiopian nationalist, but I don't think Ethiopian nationalism is rooted in like in ethnic superiority or in ethnic uh uh racial hegemony. I mean at the end of the day I think it's more well, like I think historic aspect. yeah historically yeah. I would argue that the office of the emperor yeah, is arguably no. is arguably rooted in ethnic superiority in the sense that we have the Solomonic lineage where you have mm -hmm. to prove that you're of the line of Solomon. But from there, you know, you might have like two, five percent of your DNA that's mm -hmm. Solomonic, let's say, mm -hmm. and the rest of your DNA could be crazy. Like I've heard accounts that Haile, Emperor Haile Selassie's DNA was 50 to 75 percent Oromo. If and, and even yeah. that needs to be explored and questioned on, you know, which tribes because a lot of them are adopted tribes. But mm -hmm. let's let's even say at face but value. Do you agree something. with that? Do you Hold agree on. With... Let me let me say yeah. let me say at face yeah. value that that's true. Uh, yeah. okay. With the Ethiopian situation, I do agree uh, because okay. I think indigenous forms of governments should be respected, and that's the kind of agreed upon historic indigenous form of governance that is at least 700 years old and arguably two to three thousand years old which has a lot of kind of evidence behind it but but i want to mention it's only in the office of the emperor even the emperor's wife could be anything the queen consort and every other local regional position could be yeah. Uh, the sultanates and emirates in afar and in somali you could yeah. be uh you can be a, a hereditary chief in uh, northern Gwandar or in northern yeah. Shoa or yeah. in Jimma, uh, or yeah. you could you could not be hereditary. You could be someone who was appointed to that position. So even the the level right below emperor, which is governor of a region or a state, mm -hmm. your your ethnicity had zero zero to do with it like there are some people who just inherited it through their through their family lineage, but there are also yeah. people who seized that power through their merit through might makes right. And so I would say only in the office of the emperor do you have it. And even then it's not like a purity test. It's just like, you know, yeah. find some link. Like Emperor Johannes, the famous Tigrayan emperor, uh, got his claim to the Solomonic throne through one ancestor on his mother who's from Gondar. You know, like, mm. and, and so these things are more complicated and nuanced than people who attack them. But it's good, it's good that, that you would have the same position in Italy and in Ethiopia because I think certain people might change it based off of off the context, right. and at least it means you're not hypocritical in that sense. You you would advocate for birthright citizenship in Ethiopia, even if yeah. it led to 50, 100 years, 500 years down the line, Ethiopia being like half white or something or half Chinese. Yeah, I don't I, I don't know if it's like me growing up in Addis and going to this international school of Italian has influenced me my ideas, but I don't like race or ethnicity has never been like i don't 
see them on I, I don't take them as a factors in determining one's quality or like one a, a person like a human being is like you know um license per perspective i don't think like your ethnicity or your race should influence how you think i mean mm -hmm. i am yeah you too I, I i think you agree with that too right i mean yeah except for the office of emperor <laughs> <laughs> that's my point but i'm not that's like, that's like a, gonna be another conversation where you're like you're for the monarchies. I think you're like for the monarchy and everything. I I believe more in like in the republic. And I believe in republics too, where they where they have tried and true evidence. For example, the republics of Fiorentina and I don't know how how do you say mm -hmm. Venice? How do you say Venice in Italy? Venezia, Venezia, Venezia and Fiorentina or Florence and yeah. Venice, and yeah. even the Republic of America, where you yeah. know you know what I mean, like those kind of mercantil or not mercantilist that's not the right word but merc mercantile maybe a better word merchant like or these kind of uh, sea based ocean republics and particularly when they are at a small scale like that mm -hmm. like they were after the fracturing of 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 empire um mm -hmm. i think those work so I, what does the venetian one have like a 700 or a thousand year like evidence like it's very impressive i think it mm -hmm. can work but if you look at Eritrea and Ethiopia, let's be honest, there's never been a working republic. There's no evidence of it. And people have mm -hmm. to be evidence-based. And so from all mm -hmm. the evidence that I have seen, the only good governance that has ever worked in Ethiopia is monarchy. Mm -hmm. And so in the Ethiopian context, I'm a monarchist. Yeah. In the American and Venetian oh. one, I might oh. be a Republican, a lowercase r Republican. Okay, I got you. So in the Ethiopians, it's okay. So you're, you're like, you're taking those, like you, taking those points because of like historical facts and you think like the monarch will bring a kind of like a political stability i think that's like your main yes objective, stability like. and order are my highest values and mm -hmm. uh liberty is close after that but ever okay. since the pandemic i have restructured and put order and stability above liberty uh, realizing okay. that they're all important but that order and stability come first and yeah. you know Nassim Nicholas Taleb, uh, I think a speaker of Italian and French and uh, Arabic and Levantine, as he calls it, or the Lebanese dialect of uh, mm -hmm. what others call Arabic, he mm -hmm. is a a big fan of what he's popularized called the Lindy effect. And okay. part of the Lindy effect is that is appreciating the local contexts, including indigenous forms of governance, that mm -hmm. have the greatest amount of evidence that they produce stability and order in the region. So that but, that's that's kind of where where I'm at. Where your um, point? Yeah, yeah. I, I'll let you do a, a a response to that, and then I w I do want to close out after that. And yeah, so after okay. you respond to that, I want you to close out by making a pitch for all of the people in my audience, including myself, because I haven't done it yet, to visit Rome. And for uh, <laughs> in order to flex on the audience, I want you to first make that pitch in English. Then I want okay. you to make that pitch in Amharic. Then I want I you to make know. the pitch in Italian. In Italian. And then we'll close that way. Yeah, well, okay, thank you again for the permission. I kind of like, I'm still rooting because I want to get you back on other chase games because I want to, I want to focus, <laughs> I want to focus, <laughs> <on, laughs> focus and have a rematch on that. But then I'm just saying, like, my hope. Well, as long as you acknowledge hope. my victory during this Ottawa victory <laughs> season, you acknowledge my victory in chess. <laughs> exactly, I acknowledge that. But I think that I would just wanted to say, like, my whole life, life philosophy, worldview, or like, even like on the simple things are like rooted in scripture. Like I have like a Christian worldview and a, a Christian philosophy and a, a Christian, I see everything and analyze, analyze, analyze everything in life through that life. So when you see through scripture, things like government or like how the society should be ordered or like how society should function, I think the Christian ideas are like the best ideas in the world. So I would for those. That's why I don't like. I don't believe in racism in this city because at the, at the end of the day, if you're a Christian, you're part of like a larger big family called the Christian family. I know I'm speaking like in an Ethiopian sense, but that's kind of like where I get my my values and like my worldview and like my life philosophy. So that sometimes like constructs like it goes against certain stakeholders or certain certain views but i welcome it i mean like you know competition should should happen because they reach us both of both of us and 
So thank you again for the opportunity. I want to make a rematch and let me do the pitch. Do you want me? To oh, okay. But pitch? before, yeah, we'll have the rematch one day. Yeah. Uh, make the pitch. But before you make the pitch, plug your yeah. podcast as well. I don't know how active it's been lately, but we'll just plug it so we get more eyeballs there and then okay. make the pitch in English, Amharic, and Italian. Okay. So my podcast is called, it's an Italian mainly, it's called Un Café con Sofonias. It's called The Coffee with Sofonias. And we talk about like, uh, uh, current events and current uh, current events and like social like topics that are relevant to the social society through a Christian lens. So we analyze scripture. We I debated the last time between uh, Christians from a Protestant and an Orthodox uh, uh, version of it. Uh, if you want to guys see it, oh, it's called like Uncafe con Sofonia. So just like go YouTube and you find it there. And to make a pitch, let me start in the time because we am living in Italy. Se per favore venite tutti a vedere, grazie di tutto prima di tutto per l'opportunità di avermi visto in questo modo. Come vedete parlo bene italiano rispetto al mio inglese, le amarico. Però se siete in zona, oppure se siete in Europa, nel sud Europa, venite a vedere l'Italia, che è un paese bellissimo, straordinario, con una cultura proprio pazzesca, millenaria. Si mangia bene, si vive bene, la gente è tranquilla. Quindi alla fine dovete venire per forza a visitare Roma, che è una delle bellissime città al mondo, quindi è un onore avervi e ospitarvi a Roma perché è un paese meraviglioso e non ve ne pentirete di questa decisione perché è una delle, è una delle qualità, culture, eh, gastronomicamente parlando, è una delle più belle paese di città al mondo. Ah, my Italia? Non <laughs> Fantastico! And uh, yeah, just let me think. Uh, let me let me say that in English. If you, Italy is like one of the best and beautiful countries in the whole wide world. I think next to Ethiopia, obviously. Uh, after Ethiopia, I might say. And uh, if you want to visit it, uh, you can find my contacts like uh, on my podcast. Just write me, and for any assistance, I'm there. So it's a beautiful country. Come and visit. You will see. You will see where the past and the present meets. Like in Rome, you will see all the glorious Roman area from 2000 uh, year old history. And when the present meets with the modern time, so you will love it. I'm a little bit of a bacon, the Mokiro, Italian, but I'm young. I'm a Katayan girl, I'm a 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 girl